it's beefy. Let's see how beefy. Oh yeah, for part one, this is fairly large. Uh, we're making a number of changes to improve how characters mitigate ailments, use flasks, and build their defense of their characters. We're also addressing the extreme power of auras and curses and parties, while improving the strength of these mechanics for builds with a smaller investment. Finally, we're changing elemental overload and elemental equilibrium and massively buffing elemental damage over time to be less dependent on them. <clears throat> Wait. It's an RF league. It's happening. Pause fucking champ. Defense buffs, elemental damage over time buffs, EE buffs, EO buffs, and defense. Wait, did I say defense already? I might have said defense already. <clears throat> It's never RF. Tell that to the guy who played Gauntlet and got to like level 96 and killed Shaper. Say it's not RF. Fuck you, Pats fan. You don't know. Man killed Sh uh, Gauntlet Shaper as RF as a jug. Good God. Incredibly boring. RF is such a fun skill. It doesn't have any right to be as fun as it is, but it's so fun. So the reason I mention Occultist RF is because if they're buffing curses for low investment, offensive and defensive curses in a solo play setting might actually be... Well, let me, let me be frank. Curses are ridiculously strong. Like, super, get, like, and Feeble and Temp Chains are busted. Like, busted, busted. But the problem with Auras is that... Or the problem with the uh, Curses is how you apply them, right? So most people would rather just run a Blasphemy set up. Oh, they included the full patch stuff? Fuck, I gotta read it. God oh, damn it. I only read like the first paragraph. Okay, in 3.15, we changed how flasks prevent ailments and curses on you, but didn't provide enough reasonable alternatives for mitigating ailments. Uh, solution, introduce a large number of options and improve existing options for characters to deal with ailments. Characters should now be able to pick between reservation skills that mitigate ailments, remove effects reactively with life or mana flasks, gain immunity at a cost through utility flasks, or use improved modifiers on items and the passive skill tree. <clears throat> Oh my god, there's a lot of shit here. Hold on, I'm dying in game. I don't give a Omk um, Prime Sub on iOS is a nightmare dad am thanks a dad AO5. Thanks for playing healer dad at least one stream <coughs> does it smile. Yo, Tad, thank you for the subs, brother. Uh, I know of another guy who does that. Noogie plays healer. Noogian. Okay. Period of Elements now grants you and allies are immune to all elemental ailments. You and nearby allies gain 20 to 34 all resist. Now has a reservation of 50. Do I like that? 
<clears throat> I don't know if I like that. I do not know if I like that. I don't like it for the same reason I was mentioning that Blasphemy Curses don't really get used, right? Because all the super... Okay, so so here's how I see it. I was mentioning how Blasphemy Temp Chains is really strong in a map setting and very strong in a delve setting, right? Areas where there are no bosses, because Curses obviously suffer penalty against Uniques. Um, the reason that people don't do it is because you lose too much damage. Right? Depending on how much reservation you have, you're sacrificing anywhere from 35 to 70 to however much percentage of your mana pool, which means you can't run an aura. And not running an aura is a more multiplier for your build, and damage already got gutted. So my concern is that even though that seems... it, it I mean, it is strong. Like, I'm not going to say it's not strong. Defensively, it's insanely strong. It might actually be strong enough to the point where it's worth just using it, and then you just invest in more offensive options on the tree. Like, you won't get- you won't have to get thick skin anymore, you won't have to get crystal skin anymore, and you could just use those nodes for damage. I guess that's the trade-off. And hardcore, you're probably gonna have to do that. Like, when you're leveling now, you're literally just gonna pick up purity of elements as soon as you get it and not take it off. Ever. <laughs> like ever ever for some builds some builds might take it off all right let me read some more of this anomalous purity of elements no longer grants blah 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 chance to avoid instead it grants 10 percent increased effective aura eternal labyrinth enchant for purity of elements reservation has been changed to match the values of other 50 percent reservations steel skin now grants a buff you are Immune to bleeding during effect. So does that mean it removes it too? <clears throat> I think we just sit here for a second. Tempest Shield does not reservation effect and grants immunity to shock. That's pog. Utility flasks <clears throat> now have modifiers that grant immunity to an ailment flask, but lessen the duration of the flask. This takes the place of modifiers that give specific ailment immunity if used while the ailment is active. Okay. So 35 to 39 percent less duration. So that means a fully rolled flask would be like three seconds of immunity, right? I don't think you can get a flask to last longer than three seconds. New tiers of the modifiers that give immunity to an ailment if used while the ailment is active have been added to life and mana flasks, providing up to 17 seconds of immunity at the highest tier. New tiers of the modifiers that give immunity to an ailment if used while an ailment is active. Okay. <clears throat> so if you remove a bleed, you can get 17 seconds of bleed immunity. Allied Consecrated Ground now grants 50% reduced effective curses while you stand on it. That's really good. A rebalance to passive clusters that provide ailment protection, as well as new passives across the passive tree. Between Templar and Witch, Asylum now grants Chaos Resist, as well as protecting against curses, instead of increasing Consecrated Ground effect. Between Witch and Shadow is a new cluster to protect against Poison, Bleeding, and Stun. New sources of protection for from Stun, Curses, Critical Strikes, and Ailments, as well as more specialized mechanics like Corrupted Blood, Maim, Hinder, and Impale. If you use a new ammo flask stuff, you get a million seconds of immunity. Yeah, it's it's fine. Uh, the stuff that I'm interested in seeing is what the node values actually are for this. Like, it says Chaos Resist 
and protecting against curses. So like, here's what I what I'm thinking. Can an Inquisitor just get almost full curse mitigation from being on consecrated ground, right? If you get a node from the tree or a wheel from the tree and then you have that, how how cur like are you even curseable at that point? Is what I'm I guess what I'm saying. <clears throat> or if the curse is applied, does it even do anything? New keystone passive skill added to the center of the tree that causes intelligence to provide no inherent bonus to energy shield, but instead reduces elemental ailment duration on you. I wonder what the ratio is. It's probably some really high number, though, that's not going to be worth it. Because if, even if it's like 2 to 1, getting 200 int is very easy. If it's 1 to 1, it's busted. If it's 2 to 1, it's still pretty easy. If it's 3 to 1, it's shit. Because 300 int is way too much. Actually, maybe that's wrong. Maybe it's not shit at 300. Because like realistically, how many suffixes do you need on an item if you don't need ailment immunity anymore? That, it might still be okay at 300. Uh, new keystone. Wait, we read that one. Many Pantheon powers have been updated to better mitigate ailments. I was literally talking about this. Some Pantheon modifiers have been updated to be more of a choice than others. So the Brian King Pantheon now grants cannot be frozen instead of you cannot be frozen if you've been frozen recently. Pog. Soul of Arakali no longer grants 10% chance to avoid lightning damage from hits. Now grants 10% reduced damage taken from damage over time. Upgraded Soul of Arakali Pantheon no longer grants 30% reduced effective shock or 30% reduced shock duration. Instead, it now grants debuffs on you expire 20% faster. Upgraded Soul of uh, Arakali Pantheon now grants 40% chaos resistance over time instead of 25 uh, Aberrath no longer prevents. Wait, Aberrath no longer reduces fire damage taken while moving, or unaffected by burning ground. It now grants unaffected by burning ground as well as ten percent increased movement speed while on burning ground. Shikari, uh, and the upgraded Shikari Pantheon powers have been swapped. Soul of Shikari Pantheon now grants fifty percent less duration of poisons on you, and you cannot be poisoned while there are at least three poisons on you. That's actually really fucking good. Upgraded Soul of Shikari Pantheon now uh, grants 5% reduced chaos damage taken and 25% reduced chaos damage over time taken while on Caustic Ground. Yeah, Brian King gang rise up for sure. <clears throat> Soul of Ralakesh no longer grants 25% chance to avoid bleeding. Now instead grants moving while bleeding doesn't cause you to take extra damage. Oh, so that's just the... Uh, neck thing the blood grip amulet Brian King upgrade now a t16 unique map boss yeah it is it is the upgraded one that's true <clears throat> soul of yugul no longer grants 50% chance to reflect enemy chills and freezes instead now grants 50% chance to reflect hexes and you and your minions take 50% reduced reflected damage Upgraded Solar Bugle now grants 30% reduced effective curses on you. So if you take Yugle and you're on Consecrated Ground, you're 80% curse reduced already. Pretty good. <clears throat> uh, Soul of Garukan no longer grants plus 5% chance to evade attacks if you've taken a Savage Hit recently. Instead now grants 60% reduced effect of Shock. That's really good. Uh, Soul of Tukohama. Now grants while stationary, gain 3% additional physical damage reduction per second, up to a maximum of 9. Upgraded Soul of Tukohama. No longer grants while stationary, gain 0.5% life regeneration, up to a maximum of 2. Now instead grants 2% of life regeneration per second while stationary. That's obviously a lot better. <clears throat> Dude, this whole patch is a hardcore player's wet dream. 
Like, all of it. Everything I've said right now is good for hardcore. All of it. Crafting modifiers have been updated. The Veiled modifier on body armor that granted 20 to 35% chance to reduce elemental ailments and being stunned now grants 30 to 35. So they basically just undid the nerf. Okay, so they buffed all the ailment crafts. Yeah, they, they just unnerfed all the ailment crafts. <clears throat> Added the following new crafts for bench modifiers. What? Bro, you're literally just going to be ailing me for free on every build. Every build is going to be ailment immune. All of them. I mean, I'm fine with it too. I'm just saying they went from like one extreme to the other. It went from being getting ailment immunity was actually kind of a pain to Oprah, where everyone is immune to ailments all the time forever. I honestly wasn't expecting them to do this much. Can I put it on the screen? Yeah, I can put it up. Hold on. Don't. Don't scroll down. Is it bad? Should I be worried? Hold on. What is this one? You guys can see that, right? Yeah, you can. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> updated crafting bench modifier locations rank two attributes crafting bench options are now unlocked in the western forest act six these are previously unlocked in ascent act four zoom in is that better more bro you guys blind as fuck how's that <clears throat> okay um all right so they move some bench crafts around the new built crafting bench option is unlocked with other reduced damage over time crafting options this unlock was in the incursion temple but it is now found in a map the remaining new crafting options are unlocked alongside other ailments stun and curse mitigation crafting options in the ascent in act four the modifier level of existing modifiers in the rank 1 ailment, stun, and curse mitigation category have been lowered, so the item level requirement of the item is appropriate if you use this craft during the campaign. Okay. <clears throat> uh, yo, T, thank you for the bits. Chance to avoid all elemental status ailments can now roll as a suffix on all shields, previously just deck shields. Tier 1 chance to avoid all elemental status ailment modifier can now grant up to 35% chance from 23. Lower tier modifiers have been adjusting accordingly. Chance to avoid ignite free shock modifiers on crusader boots and quivers now scales up to 60. And lower tier modifiers have been removed. Elevated modifiers have been adjusted accordingly. Okay, so this is all the same. It just pertains to different types of elements, which is fine. Uh, the moving while bleeding... Doesn't cause you to take extra damage modifier. Can no longer roll on hunter shields. Okay. Chance to avoid shock, freeze, ignite modifier on belts, helmets, and boots from the essences of torment, suffering, anguish. Now scale up to sixty. Uh, lower tier modifiers have been adjusted. Improved avoidance suffix modifiers on abyss jewels. Okay. Added two new modifiers to regular jewels. 15% reduced effect of shock and chill. 10% curse effect. Okay. <clears throat> uh, brutal restraint notable passive skill addition that grants chance to avoid stuns now grants 20 instead of 10. 
The elegant hubris notable passive skill transformation that grants chance to avoid being chilled and chance to avoid being shocked now grants 80 instead of 50. The elegant form cluster notable passive jewel now grants 20 ailment avoidance instead of 15. Okay. Tricksters unite. Adding an implicit modifier with 20 to 25% chance to avoid ignite, chill, freeze, shock, poison, bleed, stun is now a possible outcome while uh, when corrupting jewels. Wow. As if it wasn't already hard enough to get a really good jewel. Now they've, they've actually raised the ceiling even more. So now you're going to get a four property jewel and you're going to go, hmm, do I corrupt it to get 20 to 25% chance to get an avoidance? Malka, hmm. Ardia is doing that for sure. Uh, synthesis implicits. Implicit modifiers on jewels that grant a chance to avoid. Now grant 8 to 10 instead of 3 to 5. Modifiers that granted a chance to avoid ailments or reduce ailment effect now at 15. Obtaining an implicit cannot be poisoned, ignited, inflicted with bleed modifier is now possible earlier in the game when corrupting a ring and now has a higher outcome chance. Some uniques have been updated. Tier of Purity no longer provides 5% chance to avoid elemental ailments. Instead, it now grants plus 5 to all elemental resistances. As Purity of Elements now gives elemental ailment immunity, the modifier had very little use. This effect affects existing versions of the item. Conqueror's Longevity no longer has 10% uh, now grants 10% chance to avoid ailments instead of 3. The Ghastly Theater Shield Bleeding cannot be inflicted on you or now grants cannot be inflicted with bleed previously. 30 to 50% chance to avoid bleeding. Kikazaru gang, 60% curse uh, reduction instead of 40. It's pog. <clears throat> All right. Mini flask modifiers grant buffs during flask effect, which isn't well suited to a life or mana flask short and reactive nature. Added new modifiers to life and mana flasks that are impactful but brief and have a duration rather than applying it during a flask effect. Uh, removed many flask effect modifiers from life and mana flasks and added the following modifiers for life and mana flasks. Hinder all nearby enemies with 40% reduced movement speed for 4 seconds if used while not on full life or mana. That's pretty good. Grants immunity to hinder for 17 seconds if used while hindered. Grants immunity to maim for 17 seconds if used while maimed. Recover an additional 40% of life recovery over 10 seconds if used while not on full life. So that means like a... What's a divined, uh, divine life flask? Max bobbled 2880. So that basically just gives you regen, right? So you're getting like 130-something health regen for 10 seconds after flasking if you're not full life. Am I reading that right? Good for RF. Eh? Eh? RF League? More regen? Eh? <clears throat> Duration change? It literally says for 10 seconds. If it's giving you 40% of the life recovery of a flask over 10 seconds, that means it's healing you for a static amount for 10 seconds, regardless of whether you hit full life or not. That's the whole point of the flask. So that this is telling you that a bobbled flask, non hillict I guess, because you could theoretically get it higher, is 2880. So you're getting roughly 130 health regen. It doesn't matter what the duration of the base flask is because this is a, su a suffix on the flask that you can roll. And it's independent of the base value or base duration of the flask. All right. Utility flasks are usually used proactively, but the ailment protection modifiers introduced in 3.15 work by reacting to an ailment on you. Uh, replace the ailment removal modifier in utility flasks with one that grants ailment immunity but lessens flask duration. Note that base durations on utility flasks have been increased to compensate. <clears throat> okay, so we knew about this already. We read like a spoiler for that. 
Utility flasks are sustainable with enough character speed and clear speed, or character damage and clear speed, but there aren't easy ways to sustain utility flasks for less powerful characters. Add new modifiers and improve existing modifiers on flasks that affect their duration or charge gain. Add some new passive skills to help sustain flasks. Extend the base duration of utility flasks to reduce how often they need to be used. This doesn't fix the problem. Actually, this doesn't even address the problem, but I, I guess I kind of get it. 66% increased charge recovery, 25% reduced effect. Extending utility flask duration. Oh, they're increasing it by 50%. That's actually a lot. Ruby, Sapphire, Topaz, Aqua, Rain, Sulfur, Basalt, Stib, Corundum flasks are 8 from 5. Golden Iron are 5 from 3. Bismuth is 8. Amethyst is 6. I mean, that's still a lot. <clears throat> the reason why I say this isn't a fix is because the inherent discrepancy between skills is what causes this problem in the first place. They're, they're fixing something that wouldn't need to be fixed if skills had a relatively decent power gap, but they don't. Or if the gap was smaller, but they don't. <clears throat> Added, adding and improving flask investment in the dexterity tree of the passive uh, dexterity area of the passive skill tree. Wait, they already put two flask nodes down there in the last patch. Those were already pretty good. Even after lowering the power of many unique flasks in 3.15, unique flasks still outclass most magic utility flasks. In addition, <clears throat> the item level of flasks did not matter after a certain point. Added multiple tiers to most flask modifiers. At higher levels, the flasks now have much more powerful effects available. Flask modifiers that increase armor or evasion are now weaker at their first tier, as the changes to armor and evasion below make them more powerful. These changes allow us to restore some of the power that was removed from Flask in 3.15 without affecting the early mid-game so much. Oh god, this is a lot. Okay. Uh, here are examples of the highest tier modifiers available. Alright, so we know about the immunity ones. They lower the duration. There's shock effect reduction, curse effect reduction, movement speed during Flask effect, armor and evasion... Elemental resist, 0.8% attack damage and leech. Or, uh, yeah, leech for attack and spell damage. <clears throat> Stun avoidance. I mean, the 17% attack and cast speed is probably the best one so far. The reason I say that is the prevalence of ailment mitigation and immunity that they are saying is going to be in the game means that flasks will probably not be necessary for this thing anymore. And you'll be able to get it with such a low investment that you might want to roll your flasks differently. Like, 17 attack speed is a fuck ton. Like, if you can stack the same suffix... I've never actually tested this, but does the attack speed suffix actually stack between flasks? If I have three of them, am I getting it three times? I feel like you are. Because it just says increased attack speed. It's not like a buff that's being applied. The old suffix that applied immunity is like immune to, to freeze or immune to poison or whatever. That was a literal buff on the character. But I feel like 17 attack speed for a flask slot multiplied by 3 or 4, that is a lot of damage just by hitting flasks. Uh, let's see what else we got. Alright, avoidance, <clears throat> block and stun recovery, Reduce charges, charge recovery, chance to gain a flash charge when you gain a critical strike. The Surgeon mod is actually maybe almost back to a usable state. Uh, charge recovery with reduce effect. Instant recovery when on low life. Bubbling got a little bit better. Hindering enemies, we know about that one. Reduce mana cost of skills during flask effect. Recovery applied as extra recovery. Yeah, that's the new one. Or one of the new ones. I mean, this stuff is cool, but it makes me think that like these two in particular are going to be very, very desirable. You could also have this, I guess. Like the crit, cast, and attack speed stuff. <clears throat> yeah, they released part of the manifesto today. It's going to be released in three parts. This is just part one.
Enkindling effects on flasks are not impactful enough and aren't bringing flasks back to the kind of power that non-permanent uptime should grant. Buff some enkindling orb effects, most notably the increased flask effect modifier. Alright, so 40 to 60 max charges. Increased duration, reduced charges used, charge recovery. Alright, so those just got buffed a little bit. Belts are an item slot intended to enhance flasks, but only have a limited uh, list of modifiers that actually affect flasks in their modifier pool. Add more tiers to flask modifiers on belts, and move the flask effect modifier out of the influence modifier pool to the base modifier pool for belts. Wowza. Those are actually very good mods, all of them. <clears throat> like, 40% flask charges gained is insane. 33% duration is insane. 12% effect is insane. Those are all very, very good. Instant life recovery flasks are by far the most reliable tool for survivability as a total life recovery from flask is a reasonable but spread over a long period of time. Keep the total life recovery from all flasks the same, but half the amount of time for this to occur, which doubles their healing per second. This is a huge improvement to how effective non-instant life flasks are at keeping you alive in tough situations. The blood of the Karui unique flask is being reviewed as a result of these changes. Now has 35 to 50 percent reduced recovery rate. Okay. Uh, there are no accessible tools for a player to change their charge gain method if gaining charges on kill isn't well suited to their slower playstyle. Yeah. This has been a problem for like eight years uh, rework the survival jewels available from the through the sacred ground quest to let you gain charges another way while reducing the charges gained from kills these designs are still in progress rangers don't have a form of life recovery that they excel at while almost every other core character has a signature special recovery method add new and improved existing Passive skills specializing in the recovery of charges for life and mana flask, as well as life recovery from flasks in the ranger section of the passive skill tree. Added life regeneration if you've used a flask in the last 10 seconds, and mana gained on hit with attacks if you've used a mana flask in the last 10 seconds to the ranger's starting area. Added new passive skills in the ranger section of the passive skill tree that increase generation of life and mana flasks, including gaining a life flask charge on hitting enemies with a short cooldown. Added new sources of life and mana flask gaining charges every three seconds, and life flasks gaining charges when you suppress spell damage. What the fuck does that mean? When you suppress spell damage. What the fuck does that mean? Anyone? Mod check? <clears throat> mod check? Mod check? It doesn't say mitigate, it doesn't say dodge, it doesn't say block, it doesn't say evade, it literally just says suppress. It's gonna, it's gotta be a new mechanic. Uh, that concludes part one of our 3.16 expansion balance changes. Tomorrow we'll sh share part two, which covers our plan for core character defenses and recovery. Please keep in mind, as we're so far away from launch, elements of what we've written here may change after further playtesting, feedback, and iteration. There's plenty more to discover in our upcoming reveal of Path of Exile Scourge and its and its patch notes. See you tomorrow. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Don't fall! Oh my god. <clears throat> yeah, it... Okay, so here's what I think. It's gonna go from being too hard to too easy, and ailments are just gonna be ignored again. That being said, having them just be ignored is better than them being impossible to deal with. I think that's just true. 
I think that it was shitty that there was no way to, to deal with curses. I think it was shitty that ailments could only be dealt with by a few classes. And this stuff definitely helps with that. But they, they basically just go from one extreme to the other. It's kind of like GGG knee-jerk balance kind of stuff.